Hello. I hope you're having a good week. Here today we're going to talk about something that could save you thousands of dollars in engine repairs. And honestly, this is what 95% of drivers completely miss when it comes to their car maintenance. You see, if you own a Japanese car like a Toyota Camry or a Honda Civic here in America, your owner's manual probably tells you to use 0W20 oil, right? But here's what blows my mind. That exact same car with the exact same engine in Europe or Australia, they recommend 5W30 or even 10W30 oil. Same engine, same parts, same everything, but totally different oil recommendations. So what's really going on here? From my experience working on cars for years, I can tell you this isn't just about weather or climate like most people think, it's actually about something way more interesting that involves government regulations and fuel economy standards. Stay with me until the end because I'm going to show you which oil is actually better for your engine and whether you should stick with what's in your manual or make a simple change that could extend your engine's life by years. Let me start with a real example that perfectly shows this confusion. Take a 2024 Toyota Camry with the 2.5-liter four-cylinder engine. Here in the United States, the manual says you must use 0W20 full synthetic oil only. But if you look at the same exact car sold in Japan or Germany, the manual recommends 5W30. Same pistons, same bearings, same cooling system, same transmission, everything is identical under the hood. Or look at Honda's popular 1.5-liter turbo engine that you find in the Civic and CRV. In America, it's 0W20, but in the United Kingdom, it's 5W30. So is it really about cold weather versus hot weather? Well, I'll explain this to you simply. If temperature was the only factor, then Florida and Alaska would have completely different oil recommendations, but they don't. The real reason is actually pretty surprising. It has way more to do with corporate fuel economy rules than it does with protecting your engine. Here in the United States, we have something called CAFE standards, which stands for Corporate Average Fuel Economy. And these are strict government laws that force every car manufacturer to meet certain miles per gallon targets across their entire fleet of vehicles. If a company like Toyota or Honda doesn't hit those targets, they get slapped with massive fines. We're talking millions of dollars for every tiny fraction of a mile per gallon they fall short. So how do these companies squeeze out that last bit of fuel efficiency to avoid those penalties? They use thinner oil like 0W20 because it reduces friction inside the engine. When the engine parts move more freely with less resistance, the car burns slightly less fuel, and that shows up on the EPA fuel economy test. Using 0W20 instead of 5W30 can improve the official test results by about half a mile to one full mile per gallon, which sounds small, but it's enough to keep the company out of trouble with regulators. But here's the catch that most drivers never hear about. Thinner oil means less protection, especially when the engine gets really hot or when you're driving hard. Think about it like this. Imagine coating a metal surface with a thin layer of cooking oil versus a thicker layer. The thin layer spreads easier, but it also breaks down faster under heat and pressure. That's exactly what happens with zero W20 in your engine. Driver. This mistake everyone makes it at least once. They assume the oil recommendation in their manual is based purely on what's best for the engine's lifespan, but in many cases it's actually chosen to pass government emissions and fuel economy tests. Now let me break down what these oil numbers actually mean, because there's a lot of confusion out there. When you see 0W20 on the bottle, the 0W part tells you how the oil flows when it's cold. The W stands for winter. The lower that first number is, the better the oil flows in freezing temperatures. So 0W flows better than 5W when you start your car on a cold morning. That's great for protecting your engine during startup in places like Minnesota or Montana. The second number, the 20 part, tells you how thick the oil stays when your engine is fully warmed up and running hot. So 0W20 stays pretty thin even when hot which helps fuel economy, but offers less protection under heavy stress. Now compare that to 5W30. It's only slightly thicker when cold, but it's about 50% thicker when your engine is at full operating temperature. That extra thickness creates a stronger protective film between metal parts, which is exactly what you want when you're driving on the highway for hours, towing a trailer, or sitting in stop and go traffic on a hot summer day. From my experience, I think that's a huge advantage, especially here in America, where summer temperatures can be brutal. 
Here's something else most people don't know. Modern engines, especially from Japanese and American manufacturers, are built with incredibly tight clearances, meaning the gaps between moving parts like pistons and cylinder walls are extremely small, measured in thousandths of an inch. These tight clearances are designed to work with thinner oils like Zero W20. They allow the engine to warm up faster and reduce drag, which helps pass those emissions tests I mentioned earlier. But here's the thing. As your engine ages and accumulates miles, those tiny gaps start to get bigger due to normal wear. A brand new engine might be perfectly fine with Zero W20, but a 10-year-old car with 100,000 miles on it that engine might actually perform better and last longer with 5W30 because those worn clearances need a thicker oil film for proper protection. Many experienced mechanics, including myself, recommend stepping up one viscosity grade once your car passes 60,000 to 80,000 miles, especially if you live in a hot climate. Now let's talk about heat, because this is really important. A lot of people think 0W20 is recommended because America is a cold country, but that's completely backwards. Most of the United States actually experiences hotter summers than Japan or Germany, where the same engines run on thicker oil. In states like Arizona, Texas, Nevada, and Florida, engine oil temperatures can easily hit 240 degrees Fahrenheit or even higher when you're stuck in traffic. At those extreme temperatures, thin oils like 0W20 start to break down faster. They lose viscosity, which means they get even thinner and provide less protection. Independent testing from oil analysis laboratories has shown that many 0W20 oils can lose 10 to 15% of their protective thickness after just 5,000 to 7,000 miles in hot conditions. Meanwhile, 5W30 oils stay much more stable and maintain their protective properties longer. I'll explain this to you simply with a real-world comparison. Imagine two identical Toyota Camrys, both with the 2.5-liter engine, one using 0W20, and one using 5W30. Both driven for 100,000 miles in hot southern states like Georgia or Alabama. The car using 0W20 will get slightly better fuel economy, maybe an extra half mile per gallon, which saves you about $40 per year in gas. But when you send oil samples to a lab for analysis, the 0W20 car shows significantly higher levels of metal particles in the used oil, which means more engine wear is happening. The 5W30 car, on the other hand, shows 40% lower wear metals, the engine internals look cleaner, and there's less buildup of deposits. So you save 40 bucks a year on gas with 0W20, but you potentially lose hundreds or even thousands in long-term engine durability. The same pattern shows up with Honda's turbocharged engines. Drivers using 0W20 in the 1.5-liter turbo often report higher oil consumption, meaning the engine is burning through oil faster. But when they switch to 5W30, oil consumption drops by about 30%, and engine wear measurements improve dramatically. And here's the kicker. Honda themselves quietly recommend 5W30 for that exact same engine in markets outside the United States. Now I know what you're thinking. If I switch from 0W20 to 5W30, won't that void my warranty? This is a huge concern for a lot of people, but here's the truth. Under federal law, specifically the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, a car manufacturer cannot deny your warranty claim unless they can prove that your modification directly caused the failure. So if you use a high-quality synthetic 5W30 oil that meets the proper API or ILSAC certification standards, and then your engine fails because of a manufacturing defect or unrelated issue, your warranty is still fully protected. In fact, some service bulletins from manufacturers actually say that 5W30 may be used if 0W20 is unavailable, as long as it meets the same quality specifications. That's basically the manufacturer admitting that 5W30 works perfectly fine. They just can't officially recommend it because they'd have to recertify the entire vehicle with the EPA, which costs a fortune and takes months. So the manual says 0W20 not necessarily because it's the absolute best choice for your engine, but because that's what was listed when they did the emission certification. Here's something else most car owners never think about. The quality and additive package in your oil matters just as much as the viscosity number. Two different 5W30 oils can perform completely differently depending on what's inside them. 
High-quality synthetic oils contain special additives like zinc and phosphorus compounds that create a protective layer on metal surfaces, detergents that prevent sludge buildup, and anti-wear agents that keep the oil film strong even under extreme pressure. From my experience, I think a premium 0W20 synthetic oil with a strong additive package can actually outperform a cheap conventional 5W30. So it's not just about picking a thicker number. It's about choosing quality oil that fits your driving style and conditions. If you drive mostly short trips around town, live in a colder state like Wisconsin or Vermont, and you change your oil regularly every 5,000 miles, then 0W20 is perfectly fine for you. But if you drive long highway distances, live in hot states, tow trailers or haul heavy loads, or your car has more than 60,000 miles on it, then 5W30 full synthetic will almost certainly give you better protection and help your engine last longer. The goal isn't to obsess over using the thinnest possible oil. The goal is to match the oil to your actual real-world driving conditions. Remember that same engine running 0W20 here in America was engineered and tested to run safely on 5W30 in other countries. The engine doesn't magically change just because you cross a border. Here's one more thing I want to share with you from talking to mechanics at dealerships. When these guys service their own personal cars, most of them don't actually use 0W20. I've talked to Toyota and Honda technicians who admitted they personally run 5W30 in their own engines, especially in southern states. One master technician told me, we put 0W20 in customer cars because that's what the invoice says. But if it were my car, I'd use 5W30 without hesitation because it just holds up better over time. Another mechanic said the difference in fuel economy is so tiny you'd never even notice it. But the reduction in long-term wear is huge. So even the professionals who work on these cars every single day quietly choose the thicker oil for their own vehicles. Now let me give you my final recommendations based on everything we've talked about. If your car is relatively new with low mileage and you live in a moderate climate, stick with 0W20 if that's what the manual says. It's fine and you won't have any problems. But if you're in a hot state, or your engine has higher mileage, or you drive aggressively or tow things, switching to a high-quality 5W30 synthetic is a smart move that will give you better protection without any real downside. Just make sure the oil you choose meets or exceeds the API and ILSAC specifications listed in your owner's manual. That way you're fully protected legally and mechanically. At the end of the day, your engine doesn't care about government regulations or EPA test cycles. It just wants proper lubrication and protection under the conditions you actually drive in. So don't be afraid to think like an engineer instead of just blindly following a manual that was written to satisfy regulatory paperwork. If you like this video, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what oil you're currently using and whether you've ever thought about making the switch. I read every comment and I love hearing from you guys. And if you found this helpful, hit that like button and subscribe because I've got a lot more videos coming that will help you take better care of your car and save money in the long run. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.